instant musicality, spoken language and musical language. They have so many things in common. In the spoken language, we have individual letters. In the musical language, we have individual notes. In the spoken language, we have groups of letters that make words. And in the musical language, we have groups of notes that form a motive, or what I like to call a musical word. In the spoken language, we have string our words together to make a sentence. And in the musical language, we string our little motives together, our musical words, to make a phrase or a musical sentence. Now, what's different about the spoken language and the musical language is that in the spoken language, all of these things are identified. We have spaces so we know where the words are, and we have punctuation so we know that the sentence has ended. We don't have these notations in music, or if we do, it's not a universally used way. You might have it marked differently in each piece of music. So when you're interpreting musical notation, yes, you have to play the right notes, you have to play the right bowings, you have to play the right rhythms, but how do you make that come to life? And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to do it with those two ideas. We're going to identify musical sentences, phrases, and we're going to dissect and figure out where all those tiny little musical motives are, all the little words. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So, to start, I'm going to play a song, and we're going to start with the umbrella, bigger picture of finding where the musical sentences end. And what you're going to do is raise your hand when you think you've heard a sentence come to an end. Now, I'd like to give you some big clues here. In the spoken language, we have three different punctuations. We have a period, an exclamation point, and a question mark. You'll hear these in music as well. So you want to listen for periods, exclamation points, and question marks as well. So raise your hand when you think you hear the end of a phrase, and I'm going to do my best not to help you. take on this song so you can listen a little more clearly. The song is like a conversation of questions. Would you like to go out to eat? Would you like Chinese? Would you like to go to Chan's or Hong Kong? Let's go to Chan's. So we have three questions and an answer. I'm going to play again, and you're going to listen for the three questions and the answer, and you'll lift your hand when you hear those sentences end. Once again, I'm not going to play it in a way that's going to help you. Notated to make a rest there, but this is where the musical interpretation comes in. So I'm going to give a little 
buffer of space in between each of these questions and the answer. Already, it sounds more clear. Let's switch gears now to the smaller segment. To figure out where those notes, the, where those words are without spaces in between words, we're going to just play one note. We're going to play two notes. We're going to play three notes. We're going to add notes until we hear what sounds like a complete group. So here's the first note. Two notes. Not quite complete. That sounds like an idea. Let's add one more note. Now we're kind of left hanging again. So those three must belong together. Almost like a little mini question by itself. Next. Next two. Next three. Ah, that sounded like it belonged together. Now we're off somewhere else. So it looks like we've heard this song enough now that we have three note groupings. And then at the end of each one, we seem to have one note all by itself. pull it all together now. I'm going to give little mini spaces in between the words. I'm going to give a bigger space in between the larger phrase structures. And it's going to sound a lot more like natural human communication. So there you have instant musicality, identifying the musical words and their larger phrases.